You may be seated, and if you would, turn in your Bibles. I'm going to be using the Old Testament and the New Testament tonight. But turn to Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, and hold your place there. Tonight I'm going to talk about violent faith. Get violent, hallelujah. Now, turn over to the Old Testament, the Second Kings chapter 4, and uh, I'm going to read the story there of the Shunammite woman. That woman had violent faith. But... There are three things that can bring a change in your life. Three things. I hope they made a slide on that. Amen. I asked them to make a slide on it, on violent faith. Three things that can change your life. You heard it enough that you have to. There you go. You heard it enough that you have to. Number two, you learn enough that you want to. And number three, you receive enough that you're able to. If you need to receive, you need to get in the right place. Hallelujah. And hear the word of God because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Number one, you heard enough that you have to. Number two, you learn enough that you want to. Number three, you receive enough that you're able to. See, God has been doing some great miracles in this place. And some of you, you have overcome some tremendous obstacles. What a mighty God we serve. But God has purposed so much more for your life. I thought about it. And I pin this down. Salvation is a free gift from God. And salvation puts you in God's kingdom. And that's when the battle begins. Right there. You were in the kingdom of darkness. But now you are a child of light. And the battle has begun. So now it's up to you. To fight the good fight of faith. To lay hold of God's promises. Which brings me to my text. Look at Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 says and from the days this is jesus speaking and from the days of john baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force if you're going to win the battles of life you got to take some things back from the devil you got to stand and you got to say this is god's word this is god's promise and i'm going to lay hold of it in jesus mighty name now, I want you to look at 2 Kings chapter 4. We'll begin in verse 8 there, 2 Kings 4 and 8. It says, It fell on a day that Elisha passed through Shunem, where there was a great woman, a wealthy woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And it was so that as he passed by, he turned thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, I perceive that this is a holy man which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. And let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And he shall be that when he cometh to us, that he shall turn thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and turned into the chamber, and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, called the Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. Second Kings 4.13, look at this. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all cares. What is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of hosts? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered and said, Verily, she had no child, and her husband is old. And so he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, listen to this prophet, he's talking faith. About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace the son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thy man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaiden. And the woman conceived, hallelujah, and bow a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life, my subject, violent faith. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the word of God. It's living, it's powerful. Lord, these are object lessons to, to help our faith grow. Lord, they're illustrations of what a person can receive from God if they will reach out on the line of a living faith. And Lord, tonight I ask you to impart revelational knowledge to your people. Lord, let them their faith rise so they can fight the battles of life and come forth more than a conqueror. Let me preach your gospel with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Let my tongue be like that of the writer's pen. Give us a listening ear, and everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, that is a real devil, and he's the one who causes all of our problems. 
But I want to tell you that a child of God, you don't have to put up with all of his mess. And you don't have to accept the condition that you're in right now either. Now, if you're willing to take what the devil deals out, he will keep on piling it on you wave after wave of problems. That's how the devil operates. And every one of you know what I'm talking about. Too many of us, we have a timid faith. But the text I read said that the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. So get violent, and let your faith fight for you. Hallelujah. Because the violent take it by force. Your faith can change the facts. Your faith can change fatalism. I don't care what the situation is. Your faith can change your future. You are, we're on your way to hell. Now you're on your way to heaven. Sing it as you go. So let your faith fight for you. You know, some people, they just sit around and they hope that things will get better. But the Bible says the violent take it by force. You know, you got to remember that you're in a warfare and that you're not wrestling flesh and blood. So suit up, put on the whole arm of God and get ready to fight. You know that word wrestle, it means close combat. See, we're engaged in a conflict and the devil is out to kill you. He's out to destroy you. And if you don't think so, just look at the world around us today. They're boarding babies by the thousands. The devil is out to kill your children before they have even been birthed. And now they pass, trying to pass a law that they can take the baby outside the womb that's breathing and living and kill that little baby. I'm a combat veteran, I tell you, and we got combat veterans in here, but I don't believe it's a one of us in here that that's that hard. Thank God my heart never got that hard. Glory to God. Thank God that, you know, life comes from God, and, and, and if you're in combat in a situation like that, you have to do what you're there to do, but you never let that thing take over you and make, make you into something God never intended you to be. Amen. Look at the world today. You know, if the devil can't get them before they get out of the wound, he will mutilate them. He will rape them. And he'll do anything he can to destroy you. He's out to destroy your marriage. He's out to destroy your home. He's out to destroy your family relationship. He's out to destroy your, your family. He's out to destroy your finances. But God wants you blessed. Hallelujah. God said, I... I want you blessed. And if you don't believe it, God said, I bless your children. I bless your home. I bless your finances. I bless you in the city. I bless you in the country. I bless you coming in. I bless you going out. God said, I'll make you the head and not the tail, the lender and not to borrow. God said, I'll bless everything you put your hands on. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Somebody go on and praise him. He's a good God. And God wants to bless you. Hallelujah. Now, if that's what God wants for me, I'm just violent enough that I'm going to stand up and take it. Hallelujah. Amen. But you've got to realize that there's an enemy out there, and we've got to confront him. We're a part of a kingdom, and we've got to set the bounds of that kingdom. In other words, you've got to build a wall. We've got to set some bounds. We need to set some, build some walls. Amen. We've got people trying to invade our nation. Let me just preach a little while. But we need to build those walls, and we don't need to let people come into our nation and take our stuff. Amen. How would you like it if there was a law that says anybody that comes down your street, they can come in there and rob your refrigerator, take your stuff, take your furniture, take your bed, take your cars, take your stuff, and you got to pay for it. No, we need to build a wall. God said, I want walls. There was a wall that was built around the city of Jerusalem. There'll be a wall around a new city. We need to wake up, shake ourselves, praise God, get some common sense about ourselves. Glory to God. Go and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell the devil, say, you're not taking my stuff. So you got to put the devil in his place. And I'm talking about the kingdom of God. Tell him, say, I'm in the kingdom. And when you start messing with me, you're messing with my father. When you start messing with me, you're messing with my elder brother. Because I'm in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Tell him the greater one lives in me. And I'm taking back, devil, everything you've tried to take from me. You'll understand that as this message progresses. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Isn't that powerful? I'm talking about violent faith, faith that holds on until the answer comes. I may not get my answer right away. 
Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But if I, I don't, I'm just going to hold on until the answer comes. Some people teach that once time, you pray one time, don't ask again because that's a sign of unbelief. That's one of the biggest lies the devil ever told. Jesus laid his hands on a blind man and said, how do you see? That man said, I see men walking around and they look like trees. And the Bible says he laid his hands on them again and prayed. He said, how do you see now? He said, I see all things clearly. That's what I want you to do when you come into this church. I want you to get so much revelation. There'll be so much fire of God and so much power flowing out to you. You'll say, Lord, I see clearly now. I realize the battle I'm in. I'm not wrestling flesh and blood. And I'm going to put the devil where he belongs. He belongs under my feet. It doesn't belong in my back, in my head, in my family, in my finances. He belongs under my feet. Go on, praise God. You got power. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Matter of fact, Brother Philip, when Jesus was in the garden, he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And the Bible says he prayed. I was listening to him teach Sunday school. You get some great things from other people. He said, and he prayed again the third time, saying the same words. Don't tell me that Jesus had doubt and unbelief. Not that man of faith, hallelujah. That man of God, no. Jesus, he didn't give up. He just hung in there. Till the answer came. And then Jesus said, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he'll give it to you. What a promise. He said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he's going to do it. Somebody said, well, I asked, but I didn't get it. Well, keep on asking. The Bible says, asking you shall receive. Most people stop right there. But it says, seek and you shall find. Well, preach, I did that. Well, then start knocking, praise God. The violent take it by force. That, that's what the woman did that went to the unjust judge. She said, avenge me, my adversary. Avenge me, my adversary. And she just kept on going back, kept on knocking till she wearied that old judge. He said, though I fear not God nor re regard man, he said, but I'm going to give that woman her answer. She just keeps on coming. She's wearing me out, and I'm going to avenge her. I'm going to give her what she's asking for. And then Jesus said, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find that kind of faith on her? I'm talking about violent faith. Hallelujah. See, she wouldn't give up. She just kept on knocking until that man gave her what she wanted. That's what I'm talking about. The ability to hold on until the answer comes. Look at what Jesus said, Matthew 7 and 7. He said, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Ask, and keep on asking. Seek, and keep on seeking. Knock, and keep on knocking. Why? Because Jesus said, everyone that asks receives, everyone that seeks finds, and everyone that keeps on knocking, it shall be open. I'm not promising that. Jesus, the Son of the living God, the high priest of our confession, he's the one that said that. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He said, it shall be done. Make no doubt about it. If you'll just keep on keeping on and get violent, your answer will come. You've got to have the ability to hold on. The promise is yours, and the answer's on the way if you will not give up. I was out here, just had some men to, to do something, and, and, and they, they didn't do it, and they left it for me to do, and I could have waited. But I called Brother Philip, but I didn't want Brother Philip to come. He does so much out here. So I'm out there with a spade in my hand, just digging that little bush, digging it out of that pot. And I said, God, I said, you made me. I said, and when you did, you know how I'm made. You know I won't give up. You put that inside of me. I said, so you just well to send me some people out here, praise God, to do this kind of work for me. Amen. I, I don't need to be doing that stuff. I don't need to be waiting on tables. I need to be uh, searching out the word of God so I can come with a word of power and anointing, cast out devils, heal the sick, preach the gospel, teach the word. Glory to God. That's what I'm called to do. But if I've got to do the other, hallelujah, I will not quit. I will not give up because I'm violent. And the violent take it by force. Somebody go and praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. Look at what Jesus said. If you don't believe you've got power, look at Luke 10, 19. Look at that. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power, that word's authority, tread upon serpents and scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. If you've got all the power of the devil, he has no power. Wake up to it. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm a child of God, and i got power over all the power of the devil, and I'm violent. 
and the violent take it by force. Hallelujah. You can't be passive in this thing now. God wants your faith to prevail, and he wants you to hold on until your answer comes. Now, back in the Old Testament there, we find the story of the Shunammite woman. Sometimes in your devotion, you can go back and read it all, 2 Kings chapter 4. Now, here's a woman who knew how to get violent. This is one of the greatest stories in the Bible. I just love it. This, this woman, she didn't start out violent, this Shunammite woman. She's typical of the church. Many times we have a passive, timid faith. And just like her, we tend to sit back and wait till the preacher passes out the blessings. I want to tell you something. Sometimes you can't get to the preacher. Amen. Sometimes there's not a prayer line if you're sick to come into. You don't need to wait for the preacher to pass out the blessings. You need to get in your prayer closet. You need to get along with God and let God pass out the blessings. Because if anything wonderful ever happens in your life, it didn't come from the preacher's hand. It came from the hand of Jesus. Somebody go and praise the master. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. I'll tell you what, you just can't sit back and wait till the preacher pass, passes out the blessing. Well, what do you do when you need healing? There's no healing line. What do you do when your kids and your grandkids are strung out on drugs? What do you do when they're, they're running wild and they're running you crazy? Amen. I tell you what you do. That's when you got to get violent. That's when you need faith that prevails. That's when you need some violent faith. Hallelujah. That comes a time that you just got to tell the devil, hey, devil, I've had enough. I've had enough, and I'm not going to sit back, and I'm not going to take your mess anymore. I'm a child of God, and I'm setting the bounds here. I'm setting some limits. Hallelujah. And I'm taking back what you've stolen from me. As a matter of fact, devil, not only am I taking back my stuff, I'm going to make you pay. I'm going to take some of that stuff, and I'm going to preach the word, and I'm going to hand it out to some other people. Somebody go and praise God. Hallelujah. That's what David did at Ziklag. Let me give you some Bible stories. When the enemy came in and destroyed his whole world, he got along with God. He said, God, shall I pursue? Listen now. God, shall I pursue? God said, pursue. Pursue and you shall recover all. That sounds like the word restoration. You shall recover. God said, I'm going to do some restoration in this place. And he said, I want you to expect me to do more. Because I've not done everything I want to do. God wants you to release your faith and look to him. Jesus Christ, the author and finish of our faith. Well, David pursued. David overtook his enemy, took back all his gold, he took back all his silver, he took back his wives, his children, his herds, and his cattle. And look at what he said. After all of that, he looked out and he said, what's all that stuff over there? What's that? He, and they were the spoils of what the enemy had gone in and plundered and taken from other people. And David said, they be David's spoils. In other words, he was saying, I'm taking back my stuff but I'm going to make that devil pay. Hallelujah. That's the kind of faith I'm talking about. I want you to get your victory because there are other people. Their victories are connected to your victory. Hallelujah. And, and, and when you get full of the Word of God, when you get full of Holy Ghost fire and the power of God, not by power nor by might, by my Spirit, saith the Lord God of hosts. Get in a Holy Ghost filled church where people are shouting and dancing, where they got faith and they release that faith and they'll pray for you and lift up the name of Jesus and cast the devil out and cast them down and bless your life. Hallelujah. Religion is a killer. I thought about our articles of faith. We're preaching them on Wednesday night. They're great articles. But you know, some people, I've heard them preach their articles like, well, this is the Bible. Our church believes this. No, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? That's what you need to believe. You know, some churches... They're wrong in their doctrine. All they know is what they were taught in that seminary that they went to. You go through the fire. You go through the flood. You go through some hard times. You get some neology. Get it down on your knees. And I promise you, you'll come up with a word from God. You'll come up with some principle. And you'll know how to fight the good fight of faith. How to get your stuff back. And then how to distribute it to other people. Somebody go and praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. David got all his stuff back. 
Well, let me get back to the Shunammite woman. She's barren. And she and her husband, they don't have any children. And she's an old, he's an old man. And they're wealthy people and with a lot of servants. And every time the prophet came by, he would stop in that house. He knew where to stop because they fed the man. And they put him up overnight. And, and this woman, she just honored the man of God. And Elisha, the prophet, he kept coming by until finally one day she went to her husband and she said, we need to build that prophet a room on our house. Uh, what an honor. They recognize the man of God for who he is. Recognize that God put him there. Hallelujah. And so they built him a room, put a chamber, a bed in that chamber, put a stool in there, put a table in there, put a lampstand in there. And he had his own entrance. Anytime he come by, he could just go to his room. It was his room. And so when he came by, he had a place to stay. She did so much for this man of God that he told his servant Gehazi, I said, go find out what we can do for this woman. <laughs> he said, I want to bless her. Gehazi, he went snooping around and he found out that they didn't need anything. She had everything. And he came back and he told Elijah, he said, that woman... Doesn't need anything, but I noticed one thing about this house. There are no little pity patties of little feet running around in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. There are no babies. There are no children running around here. Well, maybe you can do something for her. Maybe you can pray that God will open her womb. And before Elijah left that place, he called this woman. He said, nine months from now, you're going to have a son. Now, I want you to get this picture. Because these folks, they had been married for years, and they couldn't have a child. And here's this crazy preacher. He doesn't care anything about the chemistry of her body. He doesn't care anything about her husband's body. He could care less that he's an old man. All this preacher does is talk faith. Hallelujah. And he tells her, you're going to have a baby. Woo! And she got so stalled, she said, don't lie to me, man of God. This was such a profound statement, such a beautiful promise that she couldn't even believe what the prophet was saying. This Shunammite woman said, don't lie to me, man of God. But the prophet, he didn't come to talk about God. He came to talk for God. I said the prophet didn't come to talk about God. He came to talk for God. And any man sent by God, he doesn't just talk about God. He talks for God. If you stick around him, you'll get a word, praise God. That'll change your life and change your direction. And not only you, but everybody connected to you. Somebody go and praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. He told her nine months from now, you're going to have a baby. And she did. <laughs> I'm talking about violent faith. The violent take it. By force. That boy grew up, and one day he went out into the field to work with his dad. And he stayed out in the sun too long, and he had a sunstroke. And so the dad told his servant, take that boy to his mother. He knew that this woman knew how to get violent. <laughs> see, see, the husband, he was too busy out there working. Thank God for mothers. Amen. I, I thought about my own mother. My mother had a violent faith. I'm in Southeast Asia, 13,000 miles away, and God gave my mother a word of wisdom. She saw me in the future, started praying for me, and an 82-millimeter mortar come whistling through the air with my name written on it, but mother saw it. She saw it before it ever got there. Mother prayed, hallelujah, and God stayed the hand of the enemy, and that one of my buddies was killed. A guy right in front of me was, was wounded. I, everything around me was blown up. I was picked up and thrown backwards, didn't get a scratch on me, hallelujah. God heard the cry of my mother. That was violent faith, hallelujah. Thank God for mothers. Mothers know how to pray. My wife there, Jessica, was out in Idaho. God woke her up three nights over a period of time, gave her a, a, word, a, a word of wisdom, showed her the future, and, and she didn't see it all, just got a word. A word is a fragment. It's part of it. But God will give you enough if you walk with the master. If you walk close to God, listen to me, you new converts. You walk close to God. God will give you enough to get your faith activated so you can hold on and then reach out and the violent take it by faith. Somebody go and praise God. Hallelujah. Jessica came off that mountainside 
That car spun around three times, and it would have plummeted thousands of feet over the cliff. But Mother had prayed. She said, Mother, when that car stopped, said, I was scared to move. She said, the front end was hanging over the cliff. She said, I was scared to back it up, even. But she backed it up. And today, she has two beautiful children, a happy marriage, a happy home. Think about it. If I hadn't made it back from Vietnam and my mother not had that violent faith, there would be no children. There would be no grandchildren. Thank God for a mother's faith that'll hold on. Hallelujah. Keep on holding on. Some of you, God is used in so many mighty ways. God wants to continue to use you. Don't let the devil depress you. Don't let him get you down. Put on the garment of praise. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Praise is a weapon. Praise God. I said praise is a weapon. And your weapon, your faith will fight for you. Go on, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sister Doris likes to sing. She knows that praise is a weapon. She likes to sing her songs. Hallelujah. And God will give you a song. He's given her some. She's written some. I've written some. I couldn't write a song if I tried. Uh, but hallelujah, he can do anything he wants to. Through anybody he wants to. Amen. Amen. Mothers know how to hang on to God. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, this woman, when she saw those servants coming with that boy that had a sunstroke, she took the lad and she put him on his knee, her knees and he died. Well, she put him on her knees. That's the birthing position. She said, I'm going to pray some life back in this little boy. But he died. Amen. So she refused to accept the status quo. So she picked the little boy up, and she carried him to the prophet's chamber. And she laid him on the prophet's bed. My wife is my witness. When my children would get sick, I'd say, come here. I'm going to lay you in my bed. The Holy Ghost hovers over that thing. Every night when I lay down, you can lay in my bed, and you can be healed. And God healed time after time after time after time. Why? Because I had violent faith. Hallelujah. I just believed that if I would do that, that the power of God that rested over me would come upon my children. You're, you've got faith. Use it. Believe God for the impossible. And the impossible will become possible because you serve the God of the impossibilities. Somebody go on and praise them. We got some people, they're ashamed to speak in tongues. Praise God. I speak as the Spirit gives the other. I don't even have to open my mouth to hear him. I hear him all the time. Is that necessary? Well, it may not be for you, but it is for me because when I do it I get a word I get a thus saith the Lord I get a sermon I get a message hallelujah because I'm plugged in go on praise God if you're plugged in <laughs> glory get violent hallelujah this woman she just picked that boy up and put him in the prophet's chamber she laid him on the prophet's bed she said he's the one that prophesied this boy I'm going to lay him on his bed and life's going to come back in him. He prophesied him. I, I didn't ask for this baby. I didn't ask for him to die either. But I got him, and I'm not going to give him up now. Woo! Glory. I got him. I'm not going to give him up now. What has God given you? Look around you. Look at your family. Look at your finances. Look at your home. Say, I've got it. I've got this beautiful wife. I'm not about to give it up now. I got these wonderful children God gave me. They're heritage of the Lord. Devil, devil, get your hands off of them. I'm not giving them up now. Hallelujah. Get violent like this woman. I like this woman's faith. She's violent. She put him on that bed. But the boy didn't come back to life. Most people would have given up right there. But not this woman. Not this woman. She tried to get that boy revived. She did everything she could. She put him on the prophet's bed. He still didn't come back to life. And she ran out to the field where her husband was, and she said, saddle me a mule. I'm going to find the man of God. He said, is everything all right? Now, remember, the servant just sent that boy to the house to see what was going on. The husband didn't know. Why did she want to leave? You know, his mind is playing tricks on him now. He said, is everything all right? She said, it shall be well. Listen to faith talk. She didn't even mention death. 
She said, it shall be well. In other words, everything is going to be all right. I like that kind of talk. You know, faith visualizes the victory. Do you know how much power your words have? Watch this. Car. Horse. Apple. Mule. Cow. Everything I just said, your mind visualized it. You've got to visualize your victory. Your words carry power. Hallelujah to the Lamb. See, I like that kind of talk, faith talk. Don't talk like the devil talks. You give him an inch and he'll become a ruler. I said give him an inch and he'll become a ruler. He'll rule your life. Give no place to the devil. Take the word of God. Take the name of Jesus. Take the blood. Cast him down. Cast his imagination, his high thoughts down, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Get valid. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't give in. Because God's got an answer for you. I said God's got an answer. Now, this woman... She went out to her husband, and, and she said, saddle me a mule and give me a driver. Where are you going? I'm going to find that man of God. That's where I'm going. He said, it isn't a Sabbath. It isn't a holy day. Why are you going today? She said, it shall be well. And she goes, and she finds the man of God. And Elisha, he sees her coming. And so he sends his servant out to meet her. And he told him, he, he said, Gehazi, ask her. Ask her, how is it with yourself? How is it with your husband? How is it with your son? And Gehazi goes out there and he asks her, how is it with your husband? It is well. How is it with yourself? It is well. How is it with your son? It is well. My Lord. Now that woman's talking faith. I mean, this little boy is dead. But she says, it is well. See, you can be broke and not have change for a dime, but it is well. Hallelujah. Your husband can leave you. The kids can run away. You can be all alone, but it is well because my God's not done yet. Hallelujah. God declares the end of the matter from the beginning. Hallelujah. I'm looking at the finished product. I'm looking at what God said. I'm looking at the finished product. It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well with my health. It is well with my family. It is well with my finances. It is well. It is well. Praise God. I belong to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It is well. Somebody shout it. It is well. Say it again. It is well. It is well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. You know, bad been times in my life when I didn't have that kind of faith. They have. But this woman, she's an inspiration for every Christian. It is well. Even the prophet, this great man of God, he couldn't see what was troubling her. He said, God has hidden it from me. He said, Gehazi, something's wrong. God won't even show it to me. Take my stick. Take my staff. Something's wrong with that boy. Take my stick. Go back and lay it on him. That Shunammite woman said, no. I didn't ask for that, son. I didn't prophesy him. You did. And you're going to come back, and you're going to do something. She said, you can send that servant ahead with that stick if you want to, but you're coming back with me. She said, I'm not going to let you go. I mean, this woman has some violent faith. Hallelujah. She refused to give up. She said, you're the one that prophesied that boy, and you're going home with me, and you're going to do something about it. She just hung in there. Violent faith. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. She hung on. She had a faith that wouldn't quit. Hallelujah. She took that prophet back with her. And Elijah, he goes in, and he closed the door to that bedchamber. And I could just see him pacing back and forth. Said, Lord, you got to do something for that woman. Said, she won't take no for an answer, Lord. Lord, you got to raise that little boy up from the dead. She didn't ask for that boy. I prophesied that boy. You told me to prophesy, and I prophesied. Now, God, you got to do something about it. Hallelujah. And so he stretched himself out over that little boy. 
He put his mouth on his mouth. He put his eyes on his eyes. He put his hands on his hands. And he stretched out over that little boy. And before long, that boy started getting warm. But he doesn't have any life in him. He jumps up, starts going back and forth, pacing once again. He goes back, gets on the little boy, puts his mouth over his mouth, begins to breathe life into him. Hallelujah. The life of God flowed into him. He sneezed seven times. If you're going to sneeze, sneeze the perfect number. He sneezed seven times, and glory to God, he was revived. God wants to revive some of you. Amen. Hallelujah. The prophet took him, walked him down to his mother. And I can just hear her say, it is well, 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 hallelujah. It is well, it is well, hallelujah, it is well. I said it is well, Ramoshete le baranda la bugusha. It is well, Shara bohoshe la baranda le bugusha. I said it is well, it is well. It's well with my soul, it's well with my family, it's well with my finances, it's well, it's well. Everything around me is well because I'm violent. And I read the book, and Jesus said, The violent, take it. By four. Somebody going to praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. That's violent faith. Put that chart back up again, brother, please. There are three things that can bring a change in your life. And some of you new converts, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You hurt enough that you have to. You've been hurt. You know what it is. You've hurt enough that you know i got to have a change. Then you learn enough that you want to. And then you receive enough that you're able to. And God is raising up a church. And we're in the last days. And God said that I'm going to raise up a church. I'm going to pour out my spirit. I want to tell you something. I, I know the world is getting darker and darker. But the church is going to get brighter and brighter. Because Jesus, I mean, God said, I'm going to pour out the former rain and the latter rain in the same season. So get into the kingdom. Don't ever miss a service here. I'm telling you, come because the Holy Ghost is speaking to people. He's changing lives. We got a place full of miracles. This is, look at this crowd. Good crowd on Sunday night. Hallelujah. Amen. Go and praise God that you're in the house tonight. <laughs> We got churches closing their doors. I told you years ago, I said, if I have to come preach to the wall, I'm going to come and preach. Hallelujah. I'm going to come and encourage myself in the Lord. Hallelujah. I've read this book, and I'll tell you something. And I'll tell you, if you're watching my Facebook live or live stream, I want you to come out here because we got the Word of God. We've got great signs and wonders ha happening. We want to shepherd you. We want to teach you. We want to empower you to win the battles of life. And if you will come, I promise you one thing. You will have an encounter with God, the Most High God. And we're not going to let you fight your battles alone. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray for you. We're going to believe God with you. And we're going to watch God work. Somebody go and praise God. Let's stand and praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is well. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hey, Cricket, how's that arm doing? Wave it at the Lord. Woo, God healer this morning. Hallelujah. With my soul, it is well. With my soul, I love you, Jesus. It is well. Sing it again. It is well with my soul. It 